Hi, Adrian Pacini from Fetch Fitness. Today's clip's a follow-on from a video blog I did last week talking about pelvic tilting. Now, last week I spoke about anterior, neutral and posterior pelvic tilting. And at the end of that clip, I talked a little bit about that it's sometimes beneficial to put your pelvis in an anterior position or even into a posterior position. The goal of today is to run through a couple of examples where having an anterior pelvic tilt prior to starting the exercise is beneficial and where having a posterior pelvic tilt is also beneficial prior to starting a particular exercise. All right, so let's talk about posterior tilting to start with. So again, here's an example of posterior pelvic tilt. That's when you contract your glutes, contract your abs, and your pelvis rotates backwards. The top part rotates backwards compared to the bottom part of the pelvis. Now, this is particularly useful when you're going to undertake activities such as planking or more advanced versions of that, such as ab roller, as you can see here. The reason why is that getting into those particular positions, if you're not strong enough for the core, the hip flexors will, will take over the exercise and very quickly pull the pelvis into quite an extreme anterior tilt, putting huge amounts of load onto the lower back. So what we want to do is we want to posteriorly rotate the pelvis by contracting the glutes and the abs prior to undertaking those sorts of activities. All right, so the exercises where setting yourself up with a posterior pelvic tilt before you start that are really beneficial are planking and any sort of variation of planking, in particular ab roller. Now I'm not going to demonstrate ab roller today, but I want to show you why a posterior pelvic tilt is quite beneficial even just in a standard plank. So again, what is a posterior pelvic tilt? Posterior pelvic tilt is where I'm going to squeeze my glutes and my abs and I'm going to rotate my pelvis so that the top of my pelvis moves backwards relative to the bottom of my pelvis. That's the position I want to be in when I'm going to do the planking exercise. So here I am in a plank. I get myself into a planking position. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to squeeze my butt and my abs at the same time. And you can see now that I've engaged my pelvis in a way that I've put in a slightly posterior position. Now the problem with long-term planking, and I've talked about this in a previous clip, is that as you get tired, your abs get tired, you can then very easily drop into an anterior pelvic tilt and you can still stay here for really long periods of time with very little ab engagement. So my hip flexors are now doing most of the work where what I want is I want my abs to do most of the work. So by again, by contracting my glutes and my abs and moving into a posterior tilted position, I maximise the contraction of my abs. It means I certainly can't hold this for any length of time because I'm getting fatigued very fast and I minimise the use of my hip flexors during the exercise. So any variation on the plank, placing your pelvis into a posterior position before you start is really beneficial to make sure that A, you maximise core engagement and B, you reduce the role of the hip flexors during that particular activity. Now the same situation arises with an anterior pelvic tilt. So there's a particular exercise, deadlifts in any version of deadlifts, whereby you're getting yourself into a bent over position and if you do not place the pelvis in an anterior position or an anterior tilt prior to and during the exercise, it's very easy for your lower back to be loaded up as the pelvis starts to move into a posterior position as you go through the exercise. So let me take you through an example of deadlifting and the sort of hip hinge movement that you would undertake with this exercise and why it's important to have your pelvis in an anterior position as you start and to try and maintain that throughout the entire movement. Okay, so now we're going to cover a particular exercise where an anterior pelvic tilt is beneficial and that would be the deadlift in any version of or variation of a deadlift. So again, anterior pelvic tilt is where you rotate your pelvis and the top of your pelvis moves forward relative to the lower and that's then an anterior position. Now why is this important? So we're going to do a deadlift and a deadlift is an exercise where you're going to lower some weight and you want to maintain as best neutral lower back position as you possibly can. Now one of the problems is if you start in a neutral position and you move into the deadlift, it's very easy to go from neutral into a posterior pelvic tilt and then you're really loading the lumbar vertebrae almost immediately. I like clients to do a slight anterior tilt to begin with and that's helpful for two reasons. So if I do a slight anterior tilt, what that does is that then points my bum backwards because that's one of the cues I use to make sure that we get an appropriate hip hinge and not some sort of lumbar flexion. So again, difference between those two. This is a hip hinge or hip flexion where my lumbar spine isn't moving. And if I keep this still, that's lumbar flexion. That's the movement you don't want 
what you want is you want a hip hinge. So a way of being able to get a client or yourselves to best get into a hip hinge position is to slightly anterior tilt your pelvis, that sticks your, bum, sticks your bum out, continue to stick your backside out in that direction. So slight anterior tilt, stick your bum out, and I keep a nice slight arch in my lumbar vertebrae, which is what I want to do. And imagine I'm hanging on to some sort of weight while I'm doing this exercise. Now what happens is as I go down, if you do the anterior tilt correctly, very quickly what will happen is that the limiting factor will be your hamstrings because you've really put them on stretch by keeping in an anterior position. And what will happen is if I maintain a good pelvic position, my hamstrings will now become the limiting factor. I can't go down any further because of my hamstrings being so tight. Now unfortunately what you see from this position here is people then forget about the anterior or even a neutral pelvic position and they allow themselves to drop into a posterior pelvic tilt allowing them to bend all the way to the ground which then obviously massively loads up the lumbar vertebrae if you're hanging on to a weight or even if you're just using your own body weight. So again, it's, anterior tilting is a great way of ensuring that the client gets into the right start position and as they move through the lift they maintain a neutral or even slightly anterior pelvic tilt which engages the erector spinae which are your lower back muscles appropriately, load up the hamstrings which is a great thing and also one of the long term advantages of doing this type of technique is you start to increase your hamstring length over time allowing you to go further down whilst maintaining the right pelvic position.